it is. Okay. And that's saying something. But okay, let's start with fight, what was called the Rebel Cup. I will. Fight, yeah, well, I, I, well, I just did. That, that's actually why. Because um, they, uh, the, the, this guy, uh, when, what was his name? Oh, I've forgotten. Um, Winbrook. Whoa, yay, yay, yay. Um, huh? Warbeck. Warbeck. Yeah. Um, who um, uh, was the rebel? He was. He was the guy who. Uh, that's where it got its name from. But that's why it became the Rebel County. And uh, the Earl of Desmond, who we talked about last time, was probably responsible for um, Warbeck coming to Cork and uh, getting what he thought was. A sufficient army to go and invade England, so Cork invaded England. <laughs> huh? They did, and um, the uh, the Cork Lord Mayor was a fellow called John Walters. Um, went with him, and he got executed for his troubles. When uh, Warbeck was finally ran to ground and put in the castle, like all good rebels, and hung. At Tyburn, uh, but the, the that's that's that was in 1491, so that is where the the name the Rebel County came from. Now, of course, uh, that affected the uh, following century, the Elizabethan period, when the uh, Earl of Desmond rebelled again, and the English Crown and the English aristocracy and whatever. They'd, they'd never forgiven the Earl of Desmond for that, and that affected how the, uh, the, the Desmond Rebellion was treated. It was treated very, very badly, as we know. So the, anyway, that's where it came from. That, that's where we're stuck ever since then. But um, it's one of the oldest cities in Europe, uh, having been, uh, at least we know, to the very, very early stages of Christianity, because um, the uh, St. Finbar's church, everything around Cork is either Finbar's or Shandon, um, those are the great names. Um, but my... St. Finbar came from Lugan, he was one of the monks from Lugan Bar, and he floated down the river and found the city there? Well. There's a lot of uh, wonderful stories about where he was and where he came from and all that. Um, but just looking at his name, you know that it has to be Bar, the, the Finn Bar, the Fair Bar. So uh, Bar or Barry, B-A-R-R-E, -R -E, um, Gugon Bar, you know. So Bar is a very uh, prominent place name and family name. It sounds great. I love the sound of a singing kettle. <laughs> the singing kettle is definitely an Irish sound. Um, so Finbar uh, would fit very nicely with um, what we know of the old Gaelic names around there. Uh, so he would be like Colum Kill uh, was to Derry. He, he would have been... Um, the, the column kill, if you like, of Cork, he would have belonged to a local uh, royal aristocrat family, the, the Barrys, we call them, um, who, and the McCarthys, were the traditional chieftains and lords of the Cork area. So Finbar, and of course we know the column kill was an O'Neill, so uh, uh, somebody coming out of the old Barry family would make sense. And of course, uh, early Christianity survived or thrived, if you like, thank you, on uh, converting the old Gaelic kings, or at the least uh, adopting or um, in becoming led by or having a saint by one of the sons of the, the family. So a Barry, uh, as a monk and as the leader of the church there, in what probably was already an old 
um, Druidic or an old Celtic uh, school anyway, because th th it follows a very clear pattern where it's near water. Uh, you know, it's just like standard where they would built those kind of uh, th those kind of schools, so that it would be very normal for an uh, an early settlement, an early Christian settlement, uh, to have settled there. And as you know, they really didn't do towns, so towns weren't really um, uh, part of the old Gaelic system, except um, places where they sailed away to Europe, particularly to Spain. So it would. Huh? No, no, no. Hmm? Balia actually is a more of a of an area. It's like a tour. Um, Balia. Um, uh, it's not a town as 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 in the in the old uh, Anglo way. Um, <clears throat> nor did the French. The 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 um, just didn't do towns much. There, there would have been small settlements at those ports, but they wouldn't be considered towns in in a modern sense, um, because it, it was obviously an important place for maritime trade and all of the old archaeological s sites that are there and I've talked to quite a few archaeologists over the years from Cork University and uh, they have discovered a lot of old traces on both sides of the river. Basically Cork is on an island. It's, it's, it's really a, um, a, a, a delta, you know, it, it's just what all, it's like New Orleans, it's always what you'll find at the, at the mouth of a river a lot of marshy open ground. Um, so that, that is what Cork is. And of course, as it developed, it, they drained it and it's now no longer marshy. But it is bridges everywhere. Yeah. There's bridges on both sides because you can tell it's on an island. But then so many... The waters underneath all the streets. Yeah. Uh, so you can see that it, developed, that it was um, a... Uh, at one time a very marshy spot, but then so was Dublin, Dulin, same, same thing. So that was fairly common. Ta a lot of towns got started that way on the uh, sand dunes, the est estuary, the, the, the um, what do you call it, the stuff that comes down the river? Silts? Sediment, mud, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, mud, <laughs> but, Outside the, um, the city, further down the river, there's a fantastic harbour, the Cork Harbour. And Cork Harbour is one of the finest natural harbours in the world. In fact, it is the finest natural harbour in the world, second only to, guess what, Sydney Harbour. It's always been considered a second only to Sydney Harbour. When you can put in, when you can go into the harbour and <clears throat> into a narrow, uh, 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 a deep sea harbour inside, and you can turn the Titanic in there. I mean, when you can go in there with the largest ships ever built, there's nothing that ever they couldn't build. They go in there and just come right out again. I mean, that is that's extraordinary. And the only pl other place that you can do that with the kind of ease and comfort uh, is Sydney Harbour. And of course, uh, that's of great value to uh, large shipping because they're not buffeted around. When you go in there, it's just calm as could be. So there can be rolling outside and it can be real kicking around outside, outside the, the harbour. You go in there. So then they get to load and offload the thing. So all the great ships uh, took on a lot of their supplies. So it was, it, so it was, a, it was a, the last stop for the great transatlantic liners, not just to pick on passengers. They might maybe pick on, like in the case of the Titanic, they, they took on maybe 200 or so uh, people, but there was already maybe 2,000 on there. Um, but it would be to take on the, the last uh, food and so on. So that it would be easier to load stuff there than, say, at uh, Cherbourg or Southampton, where it had had I just left. I have the, the numbers here somewhere um, where <coughs> exactly how much, yeah, I'll just read that little portion. Um, on the 11th of April 1912, the newly built Titanic called to the port of Queenstown. Oh, I should have explained the cove. Cove, by the way, means a cove in, in Gaelic, C-O-B-H. Um, and uh, you know, like a, a, a bay. So the, the, the town of Cove 
the name goes back even older than even older than Cork, actually. Uh, there's traces, of, and then it was named Queenstown from 1845 when Queen Victoria visited until um, uh, 1922 when we got our independence. Um, it was renamed back to Cove. But anyway, <clears throat> the Titanic had set out from Southampton and called briefly at Sherbrooke <coughs> before uh, continuing into Queenstown. It was still called Queenstown at that time. The Pride of the White Star Line arrived at Roaches Point there and so on. Um, passenger in the right. The PS10 area. Total of 123 passengers embarked at Queenstown. Three travelling first class, seven second class, while the remainder travel in steerage, third class. After boarding the tenders, they proceeded to Deepwater Quay 